Welcome back to Inside Africa in the Gambia. We've been exploring the history of this nation by sailing up the river after which it's named. And we're just approaching our final port of call, the key trading settlement of Janjabura, or Georgetown as was known. Janjabure Island is another remnant of the slave trade. It's located about 300 kilometers upstream from the capital Banjul. Initially, it was used as a temporary post for slave and other trading. Then, in 1823, the British founded the island's port, Georgetown, establishing the island as a refuge for freed and escaped slaves. In the mid-90s, both the town and the island were renamed Janjabure after two brothers, Jajang and Bure, who are believed to be the island's first settlers. So now we have come to the very, very important part of the history of this island, the Freedom Monument. Hassam Sise takes me to our first stop, the Foraya Soto Freedom Tree Monument. A local historian explains why this site is a symbol of freedom. So we are in a place where, as the story had been, slavery was abolished. So at this spot, it was, a, it was an instrument, obviously, to facilitate the total abolition of slavery. That is, they created a pole here. If any slave ran and touched that pole, you were free. According to legend, after touching the pole, the British would register the names of the freed slaves to protect them from becoming enslaved again. A tree was planted in the spot where the pole supposedly once stood. After that tree died, the town planted this rubber tree. We replanted it only to remind everybody that when there was a the long time of slavery, it came to a stop and here was the significant point. Here was the point that everybody could understand that if you come here, you are registered to be no more a slave. So who comes here to visit and to see? The tourists come in here. Often all the tourists who come to Georgetown reach this place. And when they come, we tell them it's not the blame of anybody anymore. Only to know that don't lose and lose the lesson. Tekatiti sends me off with a song about the island. Janjambure. Here is Janjambure. I love Janjambure. I live in Janjambure, mm -hmm. the Gambia. Wesleyan missionaries from the Methodist Church played a key role in helping former slaves resettle in Jajabure. The church where much of that work took place still stands today. When the church was completed, it was identified as a place where the gospel of Christ is preached. And alongside with the, uh, the, the church, they also brought education. Education to help them how to read and write in order for them to have their freedom to stop the slave trade in Africa. The church opened in the mid-1830s and is considered the oldest Methodist church in sub-Saharan Africa. We have what we call freedom of worship. We have Muslims here and Christians. But uh, in terms of living together, we saw that oneness with one another. So we don't have problem and we don't find it difficult to walk in this island. No, that we just live like one family. We continue to Armitage High School, the nation's only boarding school. It's where Sise and many others got their start. It is one of the you know, famous schools in the Gambia, but specifically for the sons of chiefs. Sisa says students were taught certain skills and subjects so they could help their fathers run their courts and districts. But children who were not from elite families received a different kind of education. The British were also not keen, like on, you know, I mean, training, you know, I mean, I mean, like the natives, as they used to call us, 
like in subjects like mathematics or physics or chemistry. You know, then much later, uh, like in the 1940s, you know, the, you know curriculum expanded. I mean, like for everybody, you are the sons of chief, you know, or you know, I mean, like the son of a commoner. That is funny because just coming in, I see that their basic importance is women and girls. Yes. So it's yes. now changed. Oh, oh yes, you know, things have changed quite a lot since 1927 when it was strictly for the sons of chiefs. And then yes. girls were neglected, and now girls are more important. In the last row. I get a chance to see these girls in action in a science class. Imagine, it's like a melting pot. I mean, like students from all parts of the country, you know, from different ethnic groups, you know, they're all intermingled here. Uh, you know, for the, I mean, like six years. So, so you can see that Amitech, you know, has really contributed, you know, to building, you know, like a cohesive Gambia. From freed slaves embarking on a life of freedom, to missionaries introducing a new faith, to the next generation of Gambians improving their lives through education. New opportunities continue to emerge from these waters. And that's it for this week on Inside Africa. Find us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and visit us online, cnn.com slash Inside Africa. Until next week, from the shores of Janjambura Island on the River Gambia, thank you and goodbye. In Mandinka, and Nimbara, Fawati Koteng. Thank you.